This guy is gross. He's disgusting. He's a serial killer. All serial killers tend to be gross. But this one, he's, um, he's gross. Ugh. Hello, truest of all the crimers, except for you. Persephone. This is the case of Jerome Jerry Brudos. Viewer discretion is advised. So this creeper peeper is also known as the foot fetish slayer, yeah, and also the lust killer, double blah. And he looks like an egg wearing glasses. But he is responsible for the murders of four women. Who is this dude? Jerome Henry Brudos was born on January 31st, 1939. Damn, that's like 200 years ago. He was born in Webster, South Dakota. Henry and Eileen Brudos, they already had a son, so for their second child, they, especially Eileen, were really hoping for a daughter. But they didn't. They got Jerry. Eileen basically resented Jerry for even existing. You could go as far as to say as she probably hated the guy. And this obviously was due to her uh, intense desire to have a girl. And... He ruined that. Over the years, uh, Eileen would wear him down emotionally, but she would also beat him physically. His older brother, Larry. <laughs> Larry and Jerry. Um, so that's silly. <laughs> anyway, his older brother, Larry, would get all the attention from the mom. Um, all the love, all the affection, it all went to him. And Jerry got literally 0% of it. This may have led to what eventually would be um, Jerry being fond of uh, wearing women's clothes and shoes, um, perhaps some sort of psychological reaction to his mother wanting a daughter and hating him because he wasn't one. By the way, it's perfectly fine to empathize with Jerry's unfortunate upbringing. It's okay to feel bad for him as a child but it's not okay to then feel bad for that same person who would then go on to brutally murder four people and other things. At any rate, the Brudos family had moved to Salem, Oregon when Jerry was about five years old. It was at age five that Jerry discovered his infatuation with uh, women's shoes and, you know, trying to wear them, which, contrary to some members of uh, our current society, um, is actually perfectly okay for him to have done. There's nothing wrong with it. But his mom said, no, there is something very wrong with it. He would call him wicked, um, disturbed for, you know, doing those things. But all of that, it just made him more rebellious. It made him want to do it more. So at one point, he stole one of his teacher's uh, high-heeled shoes just right from her um, under her desk when she had taken them off. There was another situation where he had a female friend over to the house when he was like a, a young preteen. Um, you know, they were friends and she would like fall asleep on his bed one time and she woke up to him trying, you know, taking off her shoes and trying to, you know, take them. Um, so he was caught. I don't think he got reprimanded for it or anything. The shoe issue then became a shoe fetish, as then Jerry began to make it sexual. He would derive uh, sexual gratification from looking at women's shoes, touching them. Uh, he got a thrill out of stealing them. It then went from shoes to women's underwear. He would steal women's underwear from, like, his female neighbors, uh, and he would pleasure himself with them. He then, like, built up a collection of his neighbors' underwear. So his parents, uh, when they kind of found this out, they, they sent him to, you know, multiple psychiatric hospitals. And they did so in order to, you know, fix him. As a teenager, this fetish turned into violence. When he was about 17 years old, he had followed 
a woman um, and kind of like stalked behind her, knocked her out and then stole her shoes. And then he attempted to sexually assault her as he also threatened to murder her if she did anything. But he didn't manage to actually assault her and she got away. This would lead to an arrest and he was thrown in uh, the psych ward of the Oregon State Hospital. He spent a tad under a year there and he talked with a lot of shrinks. They said that his behavior and his, you know, uh, these bizarre sexual fantasies all derive from his hatred of his mother. No shit. These psychiatrists would then go on to diagnose him as being schizophrenic. Um, but like I said, he only spent a little under a year, about nine months he spent in this hospital and then they just released him. They said, well, there isn't enough wrong with him, right? We, just, we don't see enough wrong that we need to like keep him here. So Jerry Brudos was put back out into the world. He graduated high school in 1957. In 1961, he got hitched, yeah, to a woman. Well, a girl, she was 17 years old and he was about 22 years old. They would go on to have two kids together. Um, uh, and uh, Jerry, even though this was his wife, he still managed to be extremely creepy. He would basically tell her that she needed to do the dishes and mop and sweep around the house, do chores completely nude while he took pictures of her doing it. She refused a lot, but then it got to a point where he didn't let her refuse, if you know what I mean. He just became very abusive, demanding, so she kind of had no choice. Oh, by the way, while she was doing all of that, she could have on one article of clothing. You guessed it. Shoes. High-heeled shoes. By the way, their neighbors were none the wiser. Um, they all described Jerry as this super laid-back, uh, calm, sweet, nice guy. Like, he just he didn't do drugs. He didn't smoke. He didn't drink. He was just... He came off as like this ideal husband and father to the outside world. But monsters are usually the best at disguising themselves. That's how they get away with it for so long. Several years would go by and Jerry and Darcy, his wife, they would begin to just sort of slowly drift apart. Um, Darcy wanted to focus all of her attention on the kids. Obviously, she did not love uh, Jerry. Um, so Jerry, he wouldn't really take it out on her at this point. He would then just sort of leave the house and go hunting. He would break into neighbors' houses and houses in the surrounding areas um, that he knew where women lived. He would go in and steal and sniff their shoes and underwear. And then he would bring them all back home and just have a collection of them. And then it became worse in 1967. He was prowling around in the dark one night uh, and he came across a woman walking on her own and he noticed her shoes and he got really turned on by her shoes. He followed her uh, until she got home and then he broke into her house. He hid in a closet while she was not aware um, and waited for her to go to bed. That's fucking terrifying. When she fell asleep, he crept out of the closet, climbed on top of her, and began to strangle her until she fell unconscious. He then became sexually aroused by her unconscious body. And so he sexually assaulted her while she was knocked out. When he was finished, he stole her underwear and shoes and took off. The woman, by the way, she survived. She wasn't killed at all. Fast forward to January 26th, 1968. 19-year-old Linda Slauson was an encyclopedia salesperson who would go around neighborhoods and try to sell them. Unfortunately for her, she would end up knocking on the door of Jerome Brudos in Salem, Oregon. Jerry let her inside and managed to lure her down to his basement under the promise that he could he would hear her sales pitch down there because his wife and kids were still home and he didn't want them to be bothered. When they got to the basement, he took a piece of wood 
and he bashed her over the head. He then strangled her until she was dead. He would then dress her body up in various women's clothing that he had stolen over the years. He posed her body in certain positions in order to gratify himself. He then cut off her left foot and then stored it in his freezer. Why did he do that? Well, he wanted to use it to model the shoes he had stolen from other women. He then took Linda's body and tied her to a car engine and threw her into the Willamette River. On November 26, 1968, 23-year-old Jan Susan Whitney was driving down the I-5 near Salem, Oregon, when her vehicle, unfortunately, broke down. Also, unfortunately for her, Jerry Brudos managed to be driving down the same road and saw a woman in distress pull off to the side of the road. He then managed to convince her to get into his car so that he could drive her to his house where she could call a tow driver. Um, he told her, don't worry, my wife and my kids are home, so nothing, you know, this isn't anything. And she got in the car. And then almost immediately afterwards, he took a leather belt and he strangled her until she was dead. He then became aroused of her dead body and he sexually assaulted her corpse. Oh my God, Jerry, you're fucking gross. Jeez, this guy is, this guy's a piece of sh Yeah. He then drove her to his garage where he hung her from a pulley system he had set up in there. Over the next few days, he would uh, dress her up in women's clothing. He would take pictures posing with him and her dead body. Uh, he would then also sexually assault her corpse repeatedly. Then, oh, and I think I'm, I'm going to be sick. This next part's really gross. Um, just a trigger warning. It's... <sighs> he would sever off one of her breasts. He then made a resin mold of it to use as a paperweight. And then he stored the breast in his freezer with the foot. Good lord, why was this man ever released from any hospital? I... <sighs> Next, he tied her body to like a large rail iron thing and threw her body into the Willamette River as well. This is when he also decided to throw um, the previous woman, Linda, her foot um, into the river as well because by this time her foot had severely decomposed. Now it's March 27th, 1968. 18-year-old Karen Sprinker had walked out of a mall and uh, she was almost immediately accosted by Jerry Brudos wielding a gun and dressed head to toe as a woman. So he forced her into his car where he then drove her to his garage. He tied her up to the pulley system. He would force her to dress up again in various women's clothing while he took pictures um, of her. And then he would eventually hang her from the pulley system until she was dead. And then he would sexually assault her corpse over the next few days. <sighs> He then cut off both of her breasts and made molds of those two and then put them in the freezer. He then tied her to a car engine and threw her into the Willamette River next. On April 21st, 1969, Jerry had attempted to abduct another woman, a 24-year-old Sharon Wood, but she managed to get away from him and she fled. The very next day, he tries to do it again this time to a 15-year-old girl. Her name was Gloria Jean Smith. And he did this at gunpoint, but again, this one, she also managed to escape his clutches and run away. Well, I guess the third time's the charm for good old fucking Jerry, because the day after that, on April 23rd, 1969, Jerry managed to kidnap 22-year-old Linda Sally. She had been, she had walked out of a mall and she was in the parking lot when he uh, grabbed her. He brought her to his garage where he did all the same things he did to the other women. The only exception is he, this time he did not, uh, this is, 
He did not take her breasts because he said they were too pink. God, Jesus. Oh. Instead, he tried to use electrical currents to jumpstart her body after she was dead. What the fuck? Obviously, that didn't work, so he tied her to a car engine. Well, where is he getting all these car engines? And then threw her into the Willamette River. By the way, if you're wondering how his wife and kids never went into the garage to see any of this, um, it's because he basically fortified his garage. First of all, he threatened her and said, like, if you don't ever go in that garage, you know, or all blah, blah, blah. So he would get, you know, uh, locks, additional locks for like, you know, the big garage door, but also the little garage door that goes into the house. Um, so that way no one could get in other than him with a key. And also he installed an intercom system so that if she needed him, she could page him um, while he was in the garage. There would come a point down the road after Jerome gets caught that she was also arrested and charged with um, basically the same charge as he was, working under the assumption that she was helping him this entire time. But she would not actually uh, go to trial. and she None of that actually went or became anything. So she ultimately was free and clear. A month after Linda Sally's murder, um, now in May of 1969, two fishermen were fishing and they would find the bodies of Linda Sally and Karen Sprinker floating in the nearby Long Tom River. They were decomposed, but eventually they were identified and given that these were two young students, uh, police would begin going to like the nearby schools. Um, and when they were at Oregon State University, they got some tips. There was apparently a guy somewhere in his 30s-ish um, who claimed he was a Vietnam vet who was trying to get women to go out on a date with him, but you know, he was very, very you know, creepy. One of these women said that this man had mentioned like women's bodies in a river uh, and he said he knew how to strangle people. Okay, it's not exactly first date uh, material, but you do you, Jerry. Police would find out that this was Jerome Brudos and the way they found out was um, they had asked one of the women um, if they could basically get in touch with this man, call him, um, cause they had his number still, uh, and if she would set up a date with him. And so she agreed and she did that. And the moment basically Jerry came into contact with her, police were already there and they rushed in and they apprehended him. They then go to his house and they search his garage and they find all that they need. Not only do they find the same uh, nylon rope that was used to tie the women to the objects thrown in the river, I mean, it was the exact same. Um, and then, but they also found all of the photographs he took with the women he was posing with and their bodies. And then they found the breasts in his freezer. So it was a slam dunk, basically. And when they confronted him with all of this, he just folded and he confessed. He confessed to four murders and two attempted uh, abductions. On June 28, 1969, Jerome Brudos would plead guilty to three counts of murder, and then he was sentenced to three consecutive life terms. He was given the possibility of parole, however, but at some point down the road, the parole board just flat out told him, you're never being released. You're not, so don't even try. You may be wondering why was it only three? Uh, this is because they could not prosecute him for the first murder, the one of Linda Slauson. Uh, this is because her body was not found and also there were no photographs of her uh, found in Jerry's garage or home or anywhere. So they had no physical proof despite the fact that he did confess to it, um, but they had no physical evidence so they could not prosecute him for it. Uh, by the way, a month after this whole conviction thing was over, they did find, they, they found the body of Jan Whitney um, in the same river. Uh, so she was recovered. But unfortunately, Linda Slauson's body has never been recovered. While in prison, Jerry kept up with his creep factor. Uh, he had just piles of 
women's shoe catalogs just in his cell that he openly admitted were uh, what he used to you know, pleasure himself in. You know, by the end of his life, uh, he looks like a sweaty bowling ball. So I hope he was having hell in prison. On March 28th, 2006. Oh, wait, that's a day before my birthday. Jerry died. Oh, he had, he had, <clears throat> he had liver cancer and he died. He was 67 years old. And that is it for this particular case. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you want to see a lot more cases from me in significantly shorter form, I have a whole bunch of videos over on my TikTok page, well over 2,000, um, broken down into several different categories that you can scroll through. Um, most of them are about three minutes long. Some are a little bit longer, some are shorter, but the gist is there's about three minutes long. Um, I don't really post true crime content there anymore, just random stuff on occasion. Uh, because YouTube is my main platform now. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and still give me a follow because I'm still around. Um, and that way you can still, you know, watch all the other videos I've made. Secondly, if you want to recommend a case to me, you can send me an email to Mikey at truecrimer.com. Uh, if you want to recommend a case, go to my link tree below in the description. Check my case list first. Scroll through it. Uh, you can search on computers or on a phone. Um, for a name, and if that name does not pop up, then send me an email with the name, the date, and where it happened, and I can add it to my list. Please be patient. It may take me a while. Um, if you see the name on my list, please do not email me it. Again, I get inundated with multiples all the time, uh, and it just, it just kind of wastes time. If you want to support me in any way, we do sell merch. Uh, I sell t-shirts and hoodies and mugs and a wine glass and other things. We sell Christmas ornaments um, for the next you know few weeks or so. Um, we do ship internationally. Adam, who makes my merch, ships really fast. Um, he'll get it to you pretty quickly. Well, here in the States, internationally is gonna probably take a lot longer, but um, yeah, so. Uh, lastly, if you have Discord and you wanna join my Discord server, uh, it's linked in my link tree below. Uh, please be over the age of 18. It's just a very chill Discord though. It's not like a crazy busy one, um, like all the gamers and stuff have, uh, it's, but it's just a cool place to hang out, chat, talk. We have a whole bunch of topics um, in there. So if you wanna join, go for it. If you're not over the age of 18, you will be kicked out though. So great. All right, well, that is it, true crime Aroonies. Until next time, um, home. Are you still here? Hi, this is the case of